All right, so right now it's day two of my Viennese adventure. I'm gonna head to Schönbrunn, hoping that it's a little less crowded because once again it's raining today. It's supposed to rain on and off, I think, for most of the day. And it's a little chilly, but that's all right. It's not pouring like yesterday, so my shoes won't get drenched and uh, should be an okay day. But yeah, Schönbrunn is the probably the most famous landmark of Vienna. I believe it was the Habsburg Palace um, before they were obviously dethroned after World War I, so I'll probably learn more today, but that's what I know for right now. Um, the walk there's pretty easy from the Nashmark, you just have to follow the main streets. So I should say while I'm thinking about it, there is a much faster way to get there than walking from the Nashmark. You could just take the train, it takes like 15 minutes. Um, I just felt like I wanted to stretch my legs, and also because of coronavirus, it's not open until 9.30 instead of 8 in the morning, and it's only about 8.15 here, so I thought I'll take a nice hour walk and get there about when it opens. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, if there's a large settlement of people, the golden arches are going to be there. Just like home. Apparently this is the Pilgrim Alley. I don't know, I think it's just a way to get to one of the train stations, but thought it was cool. There's the McDonald's again. So let it not be said that Vienna isn't proud of its LGBTQ people. So they got a little house for them there. The lesbian and gay house it says. But well if you're ever worried you're on the wrong way to Schönbrunn. It's called Schönbrunner Strasse, the street you have to follow. So hopefully that makes it a little easier. Pretty hard to miss. It's a whole street. It appears to run away from Schönbrunn though, so in case you're driving, that's something to keep in mind. You'll have to take a different street, but if you're just walking, makes it a straight shot. Over here we have some sort of random historical landmark, so I'm gonna go check it out, see if I can figure out what it is. Wunschturme Kleinen Kapelle. Uh, yeah. Here's it's not open right now. But this is someone's third statue. I just noticed this building as I was walking by. It says uh, Wohnhaus Anlage errichtet von der Gemeinde Wien in den Jahren 1930, 1931. So that's the year right before, or excuse me, the decade right before the Nazis came in and took over Austria. So yeah, it's wild to think they built that. No idea that who Adolf Hitler probably even was. He would just become Chancellor, I guess, of Germany. So living history. So this awesome building is the, looks like the government building for the 12th district of Vienna. It's really ornate. All right. Looks like we've just about done it. I think this building is part of the overall palace. Or at least I believe it's a similar style, so I guess we'll see getting close though. My face is absolutely frozen. It's actually pretty hard to talk right now because it's cold out. But we're gonna make it. Well, I think I found it. Looks promising at least. We'll see. Sometimes people say stuff like it's about the journey, not the destination, but I'm pretty team destination on this one. Pretty unbelievable. So, I don't think the actual castle's open yet, so I gotta figure out where some of these cafes are. Maybe get a bite to eat, maybe explore the castle grounds a little bit, and then come back and get a ticket. So, that's the plan right now. But yeah, Schönbrunn, very nice so far. So a pro tip for travel, apparently if you travel in the middle of a pandemic, super early in the morning on a day that is absolutely terrible for walking around, 
you can get straight to the front of the line at Schoenbrunn. I was able to get my ticket in about 40 seconds, so there are benefits to it. I'm sure there'll be many drawbacks as well, but what are you gonna do? All right, so I just completed the Schoenbrunn tour. Um, you're not actually allowed to take videos or pictures inside. I decided to be a, a mensch and respect that for once, so if there are any pictures that I took. I guess they'll come up online, but while it's still fresh in my head, I thought I'd quick review it. Um, definitely worth it to do the Grand Tour instead of the Imperial Tour, I think is the name of the other one. Um, but the difference is there are about 12 more rooms you get to see on the Grand Tour, and those rooms are actually the coolest ones that I saw in the castle. So they're all the ones with lacquered wood floors that are really intricate and, and well designed. Um, unfortunately, one of them was under construction. I guess they're restoring the floor, um, but overall, totally worth the money. Uh, I've been to quite a few of these sort of castles at this point, and this one's right up there near the top. I don't know if it's the top. I'll have to think about it more, but it was pretty unbelievable. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and look around the uh, big park behind the castle. There's, I know there's some other stuff in there. You have to pay more to see it. And it was recommended to me that I don't do that, but instead just walk around the grounds. So um, yeah, I also want to find a cafe because I still haven't had anything to eat or drink yet today, as is apparently becoming my, uh, my style. So yeah, but overall, definitely worth it. Highly recommend Schoenbrunn. Check it out for yourself. I think sometimes there's an argument over whether nature's prettier or the stuff we make is prettier, but when you combine the two, it's pretty amazing. There's the back of Schoenbrunn. But yeah, this is a pretty unbelievable landscape, even on kind of a shitty day. So, so this is basically an idiot thing to say, so try not to judge me too much for saying it, but this whole area here that we're in right now would be awesome for airsoft can't stop thinking about it now that I started thinking about it or paintball or something I mean obviously you wouldn't want to <clears throat> get paint all over these priceless statues but it's really cool it's completely lined with these I assume some sort of Greek statues guess you can do a little, do quite a bit of decorating when you're the uh, Emperor of one of the largest empires in Europe. Ooh, so, I'm supposed to be hiking up a mountain in like four days. It's an eight hour hike. And I'm having a hard time with this. Just a little path up a hill. So, this could end up being interesting. Okay, we made it to the uh, I think it's called the Glory something or other. And then back down there is the castle, so. Decent change in elevation. This looks super cool though. Can't wait to go inside. All right, so I just had a breakfast here in the cafe in the, I don't know, I'm gonna guess Glorier. Looks like Gloriette. Uh, that may just be my American brain talking. So Glorier, Gloriette, whatever it is. It was very pretty. Uh, we got a little clip of inside that I might try to put into this video. Pricey, as you might expect, being a cafe and some sort of landmark. But I was able to get a Zaka Torte, which is a very traditional chocolate cake for Austria and also, of course, a Kleiner Browner, so a little espresso. Um, yeah, it was about eight bucks, well, eight euros, so 10 bucks. But it was definitely worth it just to be in the building and get a little, get a few pictures, get a sense of what goes on in there, so recommend it. Okay, so right now I'm walking through one of these forest paths. Give you a sense of that. Going towards some building. I think it said it was the Kleine Glorietta or Glorie, whatever. Honestly, this thing I could have done without. It's not very big. Yeah. I guess good to see while I'm here, but kind of boring. So these are the Roman ruins that are on the grounds of Schoenbrunn. Um, 
I'll try to get down to the front of them. This is the back. Don't exactly know how to get to the front, but I'll figure it out. Here's the front of the Roman ruins. You can see there's a lot of grass growing up from the little pond in front of it, which actually adds a lot to the authenticity. It makes it look much older. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm a fan. I think this is the last thing I'm gonna record at Schoenbrunn. Because I've seen most of the stuff that it's recommended you see, so. Uh, I guess in summation, it's definitely worth the trip out here. I don't necessarily think you should walk out here like I did, unless you really like walking, but take the train, get here in 15 minutes, explore the grounds, they're awesome. Something to add on, it's worth noting that the Roman ruins aren't real Roman ruins. I don't know if I made that clear in the earlier clip. They were designed to look like Roman ruins. So, yeah, it's not, they're not real. Don't uh, mistake them for being real. I think they were made in the 1700s or something like that, so. Okay, I lied. The fake Roman ruins, or I guess the faux Roman ruins, foeman ruins. Uh, we're not the last thing I'm going to see. Instead, it's going to be this giant obelisk, which I think is designed to look like it's Egyptian based on the hieroglyphic type etchings on the obelisk itself. It's got a nice little water feature up here. So I think this will be it. The obelisk fountain is what it's called, according to this sign. So, I decided to try to figure out my way back. I screwed up and went like an hour out of the way, I think, so. I don't actually know where I am in Vienna right now, but somewhere to the south and the uh, west of where I wanted to be. So hopefully I can figure this out here pretty soon, but yeah, not great right now. Just stopped for lunch at the lovely Cafe Fry been around apparently since 1865 or excuse me 1895 if you believe the signs uh really good food really really good food oh no highly recommend it uh if you're in the area I'm on the way to Schloss Belvedere still. I took a huge detour because I'm dumb and didn't use my maps. Just went by my gut, which didn't work, so. I don't. Uh, so in any case, hopefully I'll be at Schloss Belvedere soon. But uh, yeah, if you're near Cafe Fry, get some goulash. They got traditional Austrian food. It's really excellent, so. I don't know what church this is, but it's on Belvedere Street, so. I think that's the name of the street at least, maybe not, but on the way to Belvedere. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, just really inconvenient someone. They're gonna be very upset with me. Sorry, give me a ride. Well, it only took me an hour longer than it was supposed to, but finally made it to Belvedere. Looks like we made it. Upper Belvedere. And Statue of Boobies. There's a little bit of everything. Something to note about Upper Belvedere, you have to buy your tickets before you actually go into the building. By which I mean you have to go to a different building and buy your tickets, not just, I mean obviously you have to buy a ticket before you go in. Um, but yeah, so I finally got my ticket. I'm gonna quick show you around the grounds here. So right there, you've got a nice little pond, and a gate, and then of course, the actual castle. You can see some people getting their wedding pictures there. Probably a pretty nice place to get wedding pictures. So food for thought if anyone's getting married in Vienna. So I don't have my camera camera, but I do have my iPhone, which means I can capture some of the stuff in here. Not sure if I'm actually allowed to or not, so I'm doing it kind of sneaky sneaky. Hopefully I am. So, I'm in the medieval art wing. Which is basically empty. So a big thank you to coronavirus. 
even though you've mostly been in pain, you've made this a little easier. So for my definitive review of Belvedere, or at least not for Belvedere, where I just was, uh, I'd say, unlike Schoengren, it's not a must visit. If you like art, it probably is. Uh, there's a lot of unbelievable artwork. I just don't really care for art. I find it to be a little bit boring, so I never know what to do in those museums. I ended up just taking a selfie in front of uh, The Kiss, which is Gustav Klimt's famous piece of artwork, so um, yeah. That was about all I really, I mean, I walked around the whole thing because I spent the money, but um, if you don't like art, maybe don't skip it. I mean, definitely walk around the grounds, which is what I'm doing now. Um, you can see these are, these are pretty cool. Um, all the statues and whatnot, but as far as the inside of the building, you can likely skip it. So that down there is Lower Belvedere. I'm not gonna go in, but I would show it to you guys. Oh. Here we are a little more up close and personal with Lower Belvedere. And here's one of the hedges in the garden. Well, I've stumbled onto some sort of Russian monument to something. Unfortunately, I don't read Cyrillic, so I don't know what it says. Pretty big memorial though. Maybe some German here. Ah, it's the Soviet soldiers for freeing Austria. I assume from the National Socialists. But... There's nothing particular here. I just think this is a nice corner. I was going to my last stop of the day, which is this church. But there's something going on. Got a couple stages. Uh, I don't know if they're competing or what's going on, but very confusing. So right as I got here, a bunch of cops started showing up. And like I said, there are all these concerts going on uh, and all the cops are in riot gear, so I don't know. I don't know what's going on over here. It looks like there's a march of some sort, um, but stuff's getting kind of intense. I really just wanted to see a church. Uh, they've got pink balloons. There's a time for everything. Time to cry. Oh, is it anti-abortion? I think it might be anti-abortion. I don't know what's going on. Oh, they're walking over here because I need to bail. Oh, whoops. I'm so very confused right now. Oh, that's, so there's uh, counter-protesters going on. That's a counter-protest. This is the main protest. Yeah, so I think it's, these people are against abortion. These people are pro-choice, I think. I don't think I'm gonna get to see the church today. That's the only sad part. Still going, this is a big fucking march. So their flag says good night white pride. And it's the counter process, man. This is wild.
what the fuck? There are probably a thousand people here. The protest counter, or not really protest, but pro-abortion people, excuse me, pro-life people, pro-choice people, and a line of cops in between. real <laughs> so do you think the Vienna police brought enough paddy wagons they're all lined up around here here's some more all the way around this loop here all police vans so I think they think something's gonna go on I don't know if it will but Maybe time for me to bail. So that's gonna do it for day two. Uh, I'm probably just gonna go out and get some food after this. I walked about 30,000 steps today, so I'm a little tired. Um, part of me is tempted to go back to that protest later. So I might do that, we'll see. The smart part of me, the rational part thinks, why go get involved in a country's protest? It's not your country, since you really have no dog in this fight, but it might be interesting might be making an interesting video, so we'll see. I might do it, I might not. Um, other than that, that's it for today. So, see y'all tomorrow in beautiful Vienna.